Hello footies and thank you for joining us once again for Foot in Review, where we've been bringing you leading analysis and opinion on all things FIFA and EAFC since 2019. Today's show is proudly brought to you by FootCoaching.com, your number one place for you to get better at FC24. Also, if you want to help support this show directly, please consider joining our Patreon at Patreon.com forward slash foot in review you get a range of benefits including exclusive merchandise coaching discounts and much much more including ad free access to the show which means you won't be hearing this very advertisement however we realize that times are tough so simply leaving us a five-star review wherever you listen to us will be greatly appreciated as it helps the show grow we'd also like to thank our skybox holder peter for his exceptional support now let's get to today's show Hello footies, welcome along to your latest dose of EAFC 24 Ultimate Team Podcasting Goodness. We are Foot in Review, powered by footcoaching.com. My name is Dan Wimbush, I am joined by the scout Nathan Downs and Shack Attack. We are recording this on Tuesday the 12th of March at around about 11 o'clock UK time. Hope everybody is well, we have lots to get into today as the uh, showdowns promo continues Maybe not quite with a bang, but even so, we have had a couple of high-priced Icon SBCs that we're going to evaluate. There are a couple of live showdowns still going on. We've got our questions in the mailbag and, of course, player in review. Not to mention our main talking points this week. We're going to be talking about playing without pressure and also the fact that we are six months into this game now. So we're going to be giving our sort of overall halfway point views and uh, and reviews so far so without further ado Nath my friend I'll start with you how are you how are things yeah very good thank you it's been a been a little while but hopefully we can keep our Tuesday Tuesday team on the go now um been been quite enjoying the game for different reasons which I'm sure we'll get into having having the usual frustrations as well but things are going pretty well thanks excellent Shaq my friend how are you we've just literally come off the back of recording a trading show Exactly. I think I'm in trading more. I've been trading. Well, I've been looking at the market and analyzing things with the fodder market more than I've done more time than I've played the actual game. But um, gameplay wise, I've really I have really enjoyed some parts of the gameplay because uh, one of the things that we will discuss is how much you and I, Dan, how much we're engaging with the game. And I think that really is helping. It's it's something somewhere has clicked. So, yeah, we'll talk about that. Absolutely. If you do want to access that trading show, by the way, you have to join up to our Patreon. It's at patreon.com forward slash foot in review. But let's get into the content before we talk about playing without pressure and our midway reviews. Let's talk about the content that we've had out. Let's start with the showdowns because this is the showdowns promo. Um, of course, some of the ones that have been released since Friday's show have expired. GG's if you did Ben Chilwell. Uh, of course, Chelsea <laughs> beating Newcastle. Those of us doing a kanji were pretty happy. He got a plus one after Liverpool drew with Man City as well. Uh, that player we're going to talk about in player in review. Um, but Shaq, I'll start with the most bizarre one of all. And when this came out, I was sat here thinking, have EA actually made a mistake with this one? Because I was like, in what competition are, uh, what is it, Galatasaray going to be playing Al Halal? Um Exactly. <laughs> And just explain to everybody what this Michael D. Oliveira versus Davison Sanchez is all about. Uh, the, it, it's based not about the clubs playing against each other. I think there's a, um E-League tournament that's going on where the players representing, one of the players will be representing Sanchez and one of the players will be representing um, the Oliveira guy. And the winner obviously gets upgraded, which is really bizarre. It's really, I think it caught everyone off guard as soon as you saw a Saudi league team play against a Turkish team and you just thought, what, what's going on here? And well, lo and behold, crazy things have happened, but this is EAFC for you. And look, it, look it's not even players that we care about. I'll be very frank and honest. It's not even a player that I've looked at. I'm looking at Sanchez for the first time now, one play style. <laughs> Why? Like, who? I understand if he's at Spurs, people might be interested, but hey, it's off league, off nation. Why? <laughs> Just why? Yeah, I mean, look, if I was being kind, Nath, you could look at the fact of if Sanchez's player wins, you know, he'll go to eighty-eight pace, um, which is very good. And of course, you could then potentially put them through the evolution, and you're looking at a player with over ninety defending, over ninety physical. Um, nearly 80, well, through the Evo, it'll be 80 in dribbling as well. So it's not the worst card, but 
you know, I know that me and Shaq have had the conversations off air about we don't want to necessarily bash these cards too much because on the surface, they're not a terrible card, but it's just, yeah, it's just a bit underwhelming, I think, for any player that's been playing this game for any period of time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Sanchez a couple of years ago was a very good starter card. Everybody kind of had his gold as a cheap option. Um, he looks, stat-wise, he looks fine, but I think Shaq's hit the nail on the head. Like, we've had some some cracking centre-backs with very good uh, play styles as well, whereas Sanchez looks fine and he should be decent, but without those those traits that he, he needs, he's kind of going to fall into the abyss a little bit. Of you'll use If you do do him and he gets a win, you'll use him for a little bit, but I think you'll find he's lacking in certain areas. And, you know, while pace is, is good and we still see a bit of the through ball meta, so your defenders will need that pace to recover, um, I don't think it's the be-all and end-all. I think the play styles are so much more important. Um, and like you say, the, the off-league, off-nation, it's, it's a it's a draw. The, the positive thing you can say is he's only 30K, so yeah. he's not, like, the pricing you out of doing him. And, it, you know, this is the time to try new players before everyone gets into into team of the season and has the same card. So if you want that, then fine. But it's even 30K. I'd rather put 30K into a different SBC, to be honest. Uh, I'll just throw it out to you guys. Oh, sorry, I'll just throw it out to you guys. With Oliveira, for example, he's an 83-rated squad and an 85-rated squad. Would you rather do these two squads or almost complete the Icon SBC? Oh, there's only one option for me. Brainer, isn't it? Exactly. Um, just very briefly, on Michael de Oliveira. I mean, look, this guy it looks like a dribbling wizard, uh, even without an mm. upgrade. You're talking 96 acceleration, 94 sprint speed. You've got 98 agility, 99 balance. But just everything else about this card is just so blare. Composure, 84. Reactions, 81. Can't head the ball. Shooting in the mid-80s, which at this point, you're not going to get him. And he's got tricks to plus, but he's got four-star skill moves. So it... <laughs> It's just a bit of a pointless card. I don't really want to spend any more time on it than that. It's there if you want it. If you're starting a brand new account this week and you want a winger, want a Brazilian winger, great. Same with Sanchez if you need to start a centre-back. Otherwise, yeah, I I would just gamble through the icon SBC. Um, Let's move on to the other showdown then that does have a slightly more appealing factor. Um, It it is based around the uh, NW. I can never say the N. Something about the NWSL that I can never say. It just trips me up, tongue ties me. Um, It's the NWSL Challenge Cup on Saturday night. It is the Gotham Knights, who I think have got the best name in football in terms of team names, um, against the San Diego Wave. Uh, And just on paper, if you were saying who's going to win the Gotham Knights or the San Diego Wave, you'd probably say Gotham Knights. Um, and my, most people will be wanting the Gotham Knights to win just because Crystal Dunn is the player representing them. A very good starter card that a lot of people used at the start of the game, Shaq. 61k for this card. You can play right back, CDM, CM and Cam. Has two play styles, Intercept Plus and Relentless Plus. This looks like a cracking card for 60k. Look, this is this is my favourite card at the start of the game. The most famous favourite card I had at the start of the game and I must admit, I completed this card before I even looked at the rating. <laughs> After I completed the card, I realized she's an 87 rated card. So, uh, and look, she is incredible in game. I haven't used this particular short on one, but I've used the gold one. And the gold one is, I, I'm really looking forward to this. If she gets upgraded, she will be a phenomenal card. If you have 60K lying around, this is going to be a fun card, especially towards the end of the game to seal up games. She's just going to, she's just going to run around the pitch, just blocking things up stopping people she's got intercept plus relentless i mean it's pointless because i think she had normal relentless before anyway so she's always she, she's always been really really good in game with that regard so uh it's for me it was a complete no-brainer i know she doesn't she may not really attract a lot of people but complete no-brainer in my eyes yeah and no, the only real downside is uh again the heading on this card isn't particularly good but otherwise this is again a very very solid midfielder if you've missed out on lots of others in the game or um, you know, this is one I think you can pick up and you certainly enjoy. Yeah, I'm very tempted. I've got Sophia Smith up front, so it'll tie in quite nicely with with her. Um, the only other thing as well is she's five foot one, so you're not going to get you know that those jewels. She might be a she might feel a bit of a canty. I, I can't say because I've not really used her, but stat wise, she she does look excellent. She'll zip around the pitch. Um, passing's pretty solid. I'd imagine being the short sort of body type, though she'll be quite nippy as well. So she might be able to twist out of a few uh, a few sort of conundrums. Uh, looks really good. Um, 
McCaskill, on the other hand, is almost half the price. Still looks a good card as a cam, but there's just... I don't know why, but I'm just looking at it going, should be good, but doesn't really draw me in like uh, like Dunn seems to be doing. Yeah, incisive pass and finesse shot are the two playstyle pluses McCaskill's got. And I sort of alluded to Pete thinking that Gotham Knights, just on the base of their awesome team name, you'd think might win. Um, however, further investigation shows that the Gotham Knights have lost all four games. They've played against the Wave by a combined score of 10 to 1. So not particularly um, in the best place. However, in recent form, Gotham have won their last five games, uh, whereas the Wave have only won, I think, uh, three out of their last five. So look, there is hope. It's a cup final. We all know cup finals, anything can happen. But just on a purely which out of these two cards that I would do, I would actually probably lean, lean towards McCaskill because I think without five-star um, skill moves, to go along with those two play styles, I think it's actually a really, uh, sorry, five star weak foot. My apologies. Weak foot, yeah. yeah, five star weak foot. Does it look a really good cam? I think we saw um, what Mega Rapino could do earlier in the season, and a lot of people were running that card as a cam. And again, I think this could be similar. Now, again, we I've said many times on this show before, the only problem with cards like this is that you, you almost have to play it as a cam because she's not good enough to be an out and out striker. And she's definitely not strong enough to do a job as a as a box to box Jack. Yeah, look, I think that's that that's the trouble with some of these cards. You need to have a cam position to get the best out of them. And with the finesse plus as well as the incisive pass, it's just suited perfectly for a cam. And I think I think you're quite right. She's quite an interesting card. She's got really good play styles and um in the midfield, I'm just looking at it, she's got ninety two strength. So in the midfield you could get away with it, but her defensive stats are horrific. So, yeah, nah, it's a five, five as four as well. Nah, I think just play her as scam, but you'll get the best out of her by playing her as scam. I think. Yeah. Again, I think for thirty-four thousand coins, again, this card could, if it, if uh, San Diego Wave win, which the form guide would suggest that they would, again, you pay a thirty-five k for a card that becomes an eighty-nine, and then you know, it's probably going to be worth more than that in fodder in the long term. So an interesting one to do. This is the kind of showdown that I actually really like because, again, it's two very affordable cards. It's two two certainly usable cards. You can argue certainly they're not going to be meta, but you compare them to Sanchez and Oliveira, and it's, you know, night and day. These are two cards that you could quite easily get into a team and play. Yeah, I, I think you could get away with either of those cards once, uh, once upgraded, I should say. Whichever one wins, I think they both do need the upgrade to be usable. But again, this is what I think the showdown should be. Cheap, available, and could be decent if they win. Um, and especially with that Evo, giving them that plus one extra as well. Um, I think it's worth having a gamble on, on one or either of them. And then staying up late into the night to watch the San Diego Wave against the Gotham Knights. Um, <laughs> speaking of things that are worth doing, let's move to the other side of the coin, Nath. Two Icons SBCs that have been released. Neither, of, well, both of which were very hyped and are both definitely very meta. Both of them heavily downvoted just because of the price. We see Lev Yashin's winter wildcard centre-back card be released and Jarzinho's um, Thunderstruck icon as well be released. So they have given us the best version of these two cards, Nath, but the price is just putting so many people off. Yeah, I mean, Yashin at the moment is on, he's 1.7 on console and 1.43 on PC. She's quite quite hefty, to be honest. Um, I've heard mixed things about him. His stats why he should suggest he should be good, although there's quite a, a difference in the pace split as well. Um, but we've just talked about Akanji. Um, I know that it's expired now, but if you did the Akanji train, then it's night and day for me. It's you know a third of the price. Um, I just think that Yashin, while he'll be good, he, and he wears his hat in game, I don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing, but he'll still wear his hat as a centre-back. So... It, none of them are drawing for me. I, I look. I was lucky enough to pull Jairzinho, um the the base version, so he's only sort of one point less. I think he was in eighty nine, but he's not. He's not the the Gersinho that we had last year, where he was in people's teams for five months or whatever. I don't know whether that's because it's a different part of the game he came into. But again, I'm probably sounding a bit of a Debbie Downer here. But neither of these are making me go out and say I need to go and complete these. Um, I, th I think it was a bit like the Chilwell SBC. We've we've had lots of S uh, players in very similar positions as well, so that's kind of not really enticing in, in my opinion. I think 
we need a little bit more variety. And Jairzinho just seems really, really dull. And not the player himself, but the fact we had that Jairzinho last year. Like, how many icons do we have out? There's, there must be, what, 40-odd icons or something you can use. Why don't they just rotate them? And I know some aren't usable, but they can juice the stats and make them, you know, a, yeah. a showdown version or something. But it just seems very lazy that we're getting rehashed SBC again. Yeah, I should say, sorry, it's the Centurion's icon version, not the Thunderstruck. Oh, the backgrounds just blend into one. I can never tell the difference, Shaq. <laughs> um, yeah, t- too many yeah. coins. Look, we just recorded the, the training show, as I mentioned. And the big one of the things that uh, we were talking about is these, these whole one play style plus meta players. And I think both of these cars just fit into that because they've only got one play style plus, they're just going to be so quickly outpaced by everything that's coming from now on. Why would you want to pour all of that resource or all of that grind into either of these two players? Exactly, exactly. I think one of the things that uh, that really, st- I think with Yashin, a lot of people actually mention of, of him being a really good card. I've never tried this Yashin card at center back. But one of the things I've just, just recently noticed just a couple of seconds ago was that he's got some really interesting stats within the dribbling category. This is a center back, right? 98 hmm. agility, 94 balance, 99 reactions, 98 composure. That's pretty unique <laughs> just for a big, tall center back to do that. Um, yeah, it's just maybe he could be good in game. I, I don't think any either of us have, any of us have tried him in game. He could be good in game. But because we had a kanji that came out roughly at the same time, that really dulled the whole presence of Yashin coming out. I don't think, I think had a kanji not been released as an SBC, at least one of us on this spot would have considered doing Yashin just to try him out. And because of a kanji, Yashin just, is um, yeah redundant in my in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, especially uh, with Maldini that we've had recently as well. I think if you yeah. didn't have that Maldini, that's in probably you know ninety percent of teams at the moment. Although it's a nice shiny new card and it, it could be slightly better, but I think if you've done an SBC like that, you're not really wanting to put you know one and a half to two million into another player that's not really going to elevate your game. You know, from nine wins to fourteen wins or or, or whatever yeah. in weekend league or whatever. Yeah, and the big thing that's dampened the enthusiasm for these icons more than anything else is the repeatable grind that we have out at the moment. Of course, you've got best of in packs as well, so you've got some juicy cards to go for, which one of us has packed one of the big guns this week. We'll get onto that later. Uh, those in the video show will be able to see exactly who is smiling the biggest right now. Um, we'll get into that later, but you've got this repeatable icon pack that is out that requires a, a thir- an 83, 84, 85 red squad. You can do it as many times as you want. Yes, it's garbage and it's feeding us garbage, but we're all addicts to the... <laughs> the casino so we're all going through it i've done seven and i've got absolutely nothing but will i do seven more probably yes um and there is also a hero pick out which gives you an 87 plus and base heroes are out of it so you can just get uh potentially some of the better cards again i've done one of them and i got i think centurion's version of joe cole um i might do another one as well before the end of the week but yeah shack i mean when you've got the options of doing all of these continuously and the 83 tens and the player picks something like that that's why people aren't so focused on grinding the higher rated cards that's why not i haven't seen a lot of ginnellas i'm certainly not seeing any jazinos or yashins either exactly i think we had a discussion where if you asked me was before ginnella came out i was really strongly in the i must get ginnella camp and then i saw the spc we discussed this last week as well dan we saw the spc and we were like no nah, i'm not really going to grind that hard and probably a sensible move because there's so many other things to do. There's so many other cards to do. In the same time that it would have taken me to complete Jinla, I did Werner, I did Akanji, and I've actually used them in game, whereas I would still be grinding to Jinla right now. So uh, so many things to get done, which is why I think we've just ignored the cards like Yashin, Jazinho. We've just, there's so many other smaller species to get done, and the repeatable grind is really full on right now. I think if you really have the time and you really have the, the grind in you, you can literally spend 24 hours grinding on this game right now and just be exactly the same coin position as you were at the start. Yeah, I mean, Nathan, are you enjoying the menus at the moment? Yeah, I am. I've, I've not got into it as heavy as you guys have by any manner of means, but I've done a number of uh, the Icon SBCs. Um, I've had one, I'd say it's a decent pull without being top. I got the, the green Fernando Torres with the five-star skill moves, so Ooh. that's different. So I've not given them a shot yet, um, but... You know, I'm the same as you guys. I like the packs. I like opening the hero, the icons. So I'd much rather do that. There's there's a lot to do. And, you know, I'm taking your leads on some of the methods of grinding because I'm not 
the the league SBCs are just annoying me right now, to be honest. So um, trying to get the grind going for that. But the 80 plus SBC that's just come out is annoying me as well because they all seem to be 80s coming out of that for me just now. But I can't grumble because at the start of the week, well, the start of the promo, I was getting high rated and, and promo cars left, right, and centre. So there you are. Uh, there you are. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've no, got a question for. Get- uh, I may may have got the fire Neymar within about the first three eighty one plus player picks, but I think in that one that pack was like two promo cards, and one of them was Neymar, and another one was I can't remember who it was, but it was another like high rated. Uh, it wasn't a very good one, but I can't believe he actually came out with backing Neymar and said, "I don't know if he fits into the team." What yeah, freaking he, team are you playing with no Neymar? It was felt very very balanced. I managed to somehow uh, win about four in a row and go up to Div One. So um it just felt so balanced, but Neymar's Neymar and his price wise up you've just got to learn to use them, don't you? No, look, I'll tell you what, there's so many cards that have come out. I know Neymar's just got the single play style, but every time, even in the past couple of days, I, I come up against him. If the guy knows how to use that Neymar card, he's so hard to get the ball off. So hard to get the ball off. He's yeah. incredibly, incredibly nippy. Incredibly. He does, and he's got I, this this uh, glitchiness where he just kind of just yeah. goes through about three people in one turn, which is tremendous, especially when, when you're like me and Dan will testify. I do like to wiggle the trick stick, not really know what I'm doing, but I, I do like to overdo it. So he's he's very good at keeping hold of it. I've got two questions for you, lads, because both of you are blessed and touched by the, the gods of pack luck. Messi, team of the year, or Neymar, which one's more fun to use in game, more effective in game? I'll defer to Nath because Nath has used both because we play co-op and he gets to use my Messi and that. So I'll, I'll leave this one to Nath because I've not used Neymar. <laughs> oh, so, right, okay. I, I would say that, that Messi is probably slightly different gravy still. Um, Neymar with the five-star weak foot is definitely a big bonus because there's a couple of times, especially yesterday, um, either it didn't quite go where we wanted it to or we kind of had to check back or whatnot. Uh, so it, it totally depends, to be honest. Um, they're both phenomenal, and they, they are both really, really similar players. They're, they're not the most electric players in the world, but you you start learning how to do them, and they, they are yeah. phenomenal. Um, but uh, if you're playing co-op and Dan says, Messi, do Messi, then it's kind of like, Dan, put your controller down because I'm either going to lose the ball, shoot stupidly, or try and cheeky check the keeper. <laughs> and and nice that's, that's why I love playing co-op with you. Um, <laughs> I should say as well, my Duke theory struck massively this week as I pulled the team of the week, Messi. Which is now just premium, premium fodder. Um, he's not cheap. He's not cheap, still, is he? Some, he's about nine hundred k, I think, maybe. <sighs> That's a premium fodder. <laughs> I got him out of the exchange, fodder. and the exchange could be where he ends up. So um, there, there you oh, go. Oh no, no, love the exchange. No, no. Love the exchange. That's one I've of those got, things you'll put on like TikTok for flex, don't you? Where you're just like, yeah, here's his <laughs> team of the week, messy in there. <laughs> I've got a question for you, oh grind king. I've seen a lot of things on, on, on X letting us know the best effective way, most effective way to grind. And there's one uh, one camp that says do all the non-rare goals and put them into the player picks and then player picks into Icon and the team, team of the week, SPC, blah, blah, blah. And I've seen another camp that said just ignore the player picks and stick to the league SPCs. And I'm starting to realize, I'm starting to see the light here. And I think league SPCs are probably the way to go. It's, it's so your look, thoughts? it's... But th- there is no debate on this. If you look at it from a what is going to be the best way to preserve coins and make coins and build up your club fodder wise, it's league SBCs and it's not even close. The big downside is that it's it's not as glamorous. It takes more time, and that that's basically it. That is the if if you're after the quick hits and, and trying to pull the best players uh, and just literally going through the grind and uh, just going through the casino grind over and over and over again. Just stick to player picks and use the exchanges and stuff like that, and you'll be absolutely fine. But look, if you do want to preserve your club, keep it building up, and possibly make some coins, more importantly, you have to go through the league SBCs because you get two tradable packs within them. And also, you can then filter those cards into the team of the week upgrade. They have some tradable packs as well. It just increases your chance to make... Because look, at the moment, if you pulled one team of the week from doing a league SBC that's tradable... Boom, you've made 45K straight out of the bat. Not to mention any of the other glamorous cars like, you know, you may strike and get a Neymar or an Icon, something like that. So the guess is if you've got the patience, but it just takes more time, Shaq. So it, it, it's all a case of, look, are you looking for a quick 30 minutes to try and get something big or are you after keeping your club intact? Look, I've been doing the daily gold upgrade and ending up at the icon, and that literally takes me about 30 minutes. And within 30 minutes, I don't have a single common gold in my club, and I'm done. 
Yeah. But if I do the same thing and went the league SPC way, I could probably grind the whole day. Yeah, exactly. And that's the key difference. That's the key difference. Exactly. Now, look, we are going to take a short ad break now for the, of course, if you are one of our Patreon members, you won't be hearing this ad break. Uh, but the rest of you, we're going to be taking a short little break, uh, after which we will be looking at the halfway point of the AFC, how we're feeling and how we're approaching the game, especially this week and sort of trying to play without pressure. Plus, we've got the mailbag and player and review all coming up after this break. Hello, everyone. No ads for us to make money this time. We want to give back. In honor of our 600th episode, we are publishing that on April the 2nd. We are giving away a special edition Foot in Review Anniversary eSports jersey. We'll give away two or three during the show itself, but we're also donating to the Macmillan Cancer Support, and we are aiming for the magical number of £600 or euros. We've added a link in the show notes where you can donate directly to the cause, and you'll see a list with all the donations so far. So you can be sure that's where we'll donate at the minimum. Food Coaching will also do their part by donating directly from all sessions booked through foodcoaching.com until April the 1st. So thank you for supporting us through 600 episodes of Food and Review and help us support the McMillan Cancer Support by donating through the link in the notes. Right, welcome back. Let's get into part two of today's show. And as we've just had a halfway ad break, we're going to be talking about the halfway point of FC24. Now, Shaq, when, um, you know, John asked us, oh, what are you guys going to be talking about on this week's show? I was actually scratching my head a little bit because I was thinking, what can we talk about, really? And then I realized that, well, actually, we're in March now. We're, you know, the game was released in September. So we're kind of halfway through this whole game cycle now. And, you know, you and I have been talking, you know, for, for years now. We've gone through our fair shares of, of EA football game titles. What are you thinking about FC24 at the halfway point? It, you know, I you... Yeah, just, just what are you thinking about it? Look, one of the things is EA has found a really effective way to make people like you, me, maybe even Nath, not grind as hard anymore, which is great. I think I'm seeing the light that actually is probably a positive thing for all of us because we spent a whole lot of time on this game. There's a whole lot of content available. There's, there's un, If you want to, there's unlimited content available. There's good cards. There's amazing cards. There's... Um, there's brand new things happening. It is a promo every single week. So the it's quite engaging. It is quite engaging in one way. But another way, I think a lot of something feels like nothing in the end, if, if that makes sense. Um, I think that's where I'm at. It, I just feel like there's a lot happening. There's a lot going on that someone like me who's very tweaked into the ecosystem is still finding it hard to understand exactly what's going on, exactly what evils are coming out, exactly which uh, player players are coming out, which SPC is being released constantly, and there's all the mistakes as well, missing on that. So it's it's a it's a funny, funny, funny year where I think I'm kind of grateful for EA for leading us to this path because it's finally gotten the hold off me where I can just we'll lead into the next subject as well. We're talking about playing without pressure. I can finally I think this just for the past two or three days, I've actually played without pressure and played without care. And I'll be frankly honest with you, I've actually enjoyed the game without having any pressure or care. And that's something that's happened just this year. Never happened in the past because I used to do everything, want to grind everything, want to do everything, want to complete all the objectives, want to get that 89 rated objective player so that I can complete an SPC at some point in time. That'll be useful. Couldn't care less anymore. And that's really helpful. Nath, where are you? Because you've had a bit of a, a more unique perspective this year. Of course, you took some time out um, around Christmas time. So you've you, you've not had this continuous grind from September. What's your relationship with the game like as we you know, sort of head into the middle of March? Yeah, it's uh, it's mixed, to be honest. Like, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Like The servers over the last few weeks have actually got worse for me, which I've never really complained about the servers, but I've had a few issues with that. The, the one thing that I'll say, it's good and bad, is that we've got some tremendous players released from from EA and very attainable in terms of your SBCs and your grind. This, however, annoys me as well because we used to grind so hard so you can get the best team. Whereas what I found now is, you know, I had what six weeks I missed or something like that. Started a whole new account on a different console, um, and my team's probably up there with the top, you know, few percentage. You know, I'm not saying it's the the best team ever, but it's also very competitive. And apart from getting the big team of the years, which people you know probably do fork out a lot of money for it's not really behind the curve so 
it's fairly frustrating though because everyone's got because the only way that we've been able to improve teams are really these SBCs. When you're playing teams, you're getting you know everyone's got Cafu, everybody's got Maldini, everyone's got Hullet. A lot of people have still got that Bruno from Team of the Year flashback. Um, majority have Eusebio, so that while it's good that it's making these players attainable and you know you've got something to grind for, I just find it is a little bit repetitive and a little bit annoying the fact that every every team like. We're in Div 1 now, Dan, and Shaq, sorry, I'm not too familiar with what division you're in, but everyone's got a god squad, and even Div 5, see, that's probably the best way to do it, but even in Div 5, I bet you're coming up against absolute god squads. Like, god squads, everyone has god these. squads yeah. every single game. Yeah. And half of me is like, it's really good, because at least you get to play with fun players, but other part of me is like, there's there's very little reward for grinding it, if you want to. Um, so, I, you know, I, I'm enjoying that, actually playing it, and, you know, co-op this year has been, been phenomenal. I've really enjoyed crossplay co-op with 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 yourself dan and with john um but i just think there's something it's just something lacking and shaq you've probably hit the nail on the head there that there's you know you can kind of you don't have to do it every grind because you know you can choose your time if you want to grind in three weeks time really hard for a week you'll still probably make up the difference that you've you've left probably a lot quicker than you have in any other iteration yeah absolutely agree with you both i think as as uh, shaq said it's great that ea have kind of got the game to a point where your team is so good that you don't feel the need to grind. Like I didn't play rivals for three weeks and ordinarily I'd have been over the last three years. I'd be sitting there going, Oh, I, I need the rewards. I need them. I need the cards. I don't need them. I can do the, this menu grind without them um, just as easily. And they have shown us throughout the entire year now that your chance of actually packing anything good in your rewards is, is non-existent. So it's taken away that pressure uh, which we'll come on to, of having to feel like you have to do this, you have to do that. I've gone to a mostly weekend league and playoff schedule with the odd squad battle just thrown in to if I need to take off an objective or get an Evo done. And it's been really good. Look, I think the worst thing about this game is the store. I think EA have gone so hard on the store packs. It's, I mean, what have we, we've just did, what, a 750k pack out in the store this week that gets you four guaranteed icons or heroes. It, it, it's... It's not a pay to win game, but it's a pay to make your life so much easier game. And I don't like the way it's going. I, I hate that so that they put so much care into, as Adam was saying on the show the other week, the, the tiddlywink micro mega star super pack in the store, but yet they let moments wither and die. They 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 they've honed in, super honed in on what's going to make the money, which as I've said for three years hosting the show, I understand it's a business. But the lack of care they've given stuff around the edges of this game has been poor. I think the gameplay has been okay. I don't think it's been as horrific as some people have said, but I also don't think it's addictive in itself. Like, I think of the amount of times I'm able to send somebody a clip of a great goal I've scored. And okay, maybe that's a skill issue from me, but there just seems so much fewer ways to score. It's just repetitive. It's patterned, and that includes the menus as well. Everything has been very patterned, and it's very predictable. And as Shaq has said, that's great because it actually lets you step away now because you realize, as Nay said, you can just come back at any point and you'll build your team up. Nepenta has put out a six-hour RTG the other day, and he got it to 11 wins. And Nep, bearing in mind, Nep was saying, I've only hit 14 wins for my main team, I think he said like three times all year. It's so easy to get a competitive squad. The gameplay is just there. And as I said, they've let, Everything else around the edges wither and die. Just th th there's no care. The cut mode they put out the other week was a real outlier, and I think it, the fact that everyone was loving it, showed what this company is capable of if they actually think about the community and try and do something interesting. And I'm hoping that maybe that trend will continue as we head towards the last six months of this game. But yeah, the first six months has been lazy, um, very very store pack driven. And the gameplay has just not really been there. But for saying all of that, I have been still playing in game, engaging with mm -hmm. it. And so therefore, I think, I mean, what would you guys give it out of 10? Because right now I think I'm probably at a 5.5, maybe 6, depending on how yeah. my form is. I'm either at a 6 or a 5. Nate? I deeply want to... Oh, sorry, Shaq, sorry for it. No, no, no. I, I deeply want to say a three, but in reality, it's a six. I think it's a six where if you put everything, peel everything into comparison, take it for what it is, it's a six. But one of the things I really love that you touched upon, the repetitiveness and the pattern, 
gameplay as well as grind. That's the part that really gets me because it's really good stuff, but it's exactly the same stuff over and over and over again, which is why it's, uh, yeah, but we're still doing it. So that's why it's a six for me. Nice. Yeah, I, I'm six pushing towards seven. I'm still enjoying it. I'm still playing. I'm still playing regularly. Um, I I have my frustrations. I I really wish that EA would do more care and like like you said, we, we appreciate they're a business and they've got to make the money. But you know, sometimes that companies can 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 do that without being so obvious. It's so in your face, and you saw it from from you know, it wasn't even the full launch. The pre launch, they were doing those. Um, ridiculous store packs where there was hundred golds or whatever it was, you know, like just just be a little bit more subtle because people in this game, like they've shown over the years, they will go to the store. Like it's inevitable. Um, but what I found for myself is when I've had that urge, I've actually just thought, like, oh, I just need to get three more wins and I get a uh, eighty-four times ten, which will actually, even if I get ten eighty-fours, it'll probably do better than those massive store packs anyway. So I think they're. You, I'm not across the board because the figures show that they are making a lot of money, but they're also driving some people away from the store with how they're doing it. You know, I would have been more yeah. likely to do it if it was once a month they put a jump like a giant pack out. I probably would have been a lot more tempted to use coins or points. Whereas because it's literally every day they're refreshing it, and I just think, well, that's just pure greed. And even little things like you know we've, we've spoken about it in the past. They've changed like marquee matchups at times to the untradeable. The league SBCs are untradeable. Everything's untradeable there. I'm like that's that's just a bit you know Scrooge like and and taking away Silver Star. Silver Stars was you know you play maybe five games get you three wins. I, I loved that just for a little bit. Yeah. It gave you a reason to have silvers apart from you know for these upgrade grinds or from, from one way or another. And like you say the cut mode. The cut mode was amazing and it's actually put back in my head now. Right, we're getting these promo cards. The last one was eighty seven. Can't really discard usable eighty fives upwards, to be honest. I'm not even really putting them into SBCs unless they're you know, if they're a gold, they'll probably come around. But these yeah. promo cards, like I am I'm just keeping these in the pack in this club now, just in case we get a really cool game mode. And I'm like, actually if I keep that eighty five rated centre half that's still got, you know, eighty eight dribble in, eighty eight defence and eighty eight pace, then actually he won't do me a main team, but he'll do these objectives. So that's a good thing, but they, they just need to kind of home in on that a little bit more instead of just being so business orientated. Yeah, and just be a bit more consistent with some of the, the as I said, things like that cut mode. Have have more fun cups, have goalie wars, have mark, you know, squad cap ratings, have silver cups, have things like that, just different things. And, and Evos as well, ever since that this whole kind of Evo chaining thing has been exposed. And um, we talked about it you know last week Shaq and then funnily enough they released a decent Evo <laughs> within seconds of us ranting about it on the show which is just typical timing but even since then I think they, they're just not releasing Evos and the points I made yeah. last week remain the same if you're new to this game if I had to try and convince somebody to come back to, to FC24 that maybe played like I don't know FIFA 21, 22 and before that what would you sell the game to them on because I couldn't sell them on the gameplay. I couldn't sell them to say, oh my God, it's so, every game's uh, hilarious. It's fun, scoring great goals, yada, yada. I couldn't, you know, you might sell them on the fact, oh, there's so many cards, you know, it's great. They, the content is up there. You know, there's a menu grind. Oh, if you're a menu grinder, you'll love it. Come back and do this. But like, if I tried to sell someone on Evos, they'd turn up and go, well, what, what can I do? There's about two for me to do. <laughs> Yet they are quite happy to give you the same crappy icon one twice. Yep. Twice. Yeah, the evil thing the evil thing would be greatly improved if they let you just go like instead of expiring them. Fair enough, some of them are behind a, a yeah. paywall, which is annoying, but you can understand it. But just, you know, for somebody picking up the Yeah. Well that's it. Like exactly. somebody picking up now, there's a way that you could have got a really good Garnacho or a good Kobe Minor who's not so good now, but obviously if you do that and they bring out a new one in the in the future, I'd love to go back and just do a full Man United Evo on my own pace oh. rather than trying to like grind that in or even a Brentford one for myself. But that 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 would be a win, like, and that would transfer Evos from being meh to being actually. This is a really cool feature. Yeah, I think 100%. with the Sorry, Evos, guys, as as we, as you mentioned Dan last week with the Evos, they're probably are scared, and I'll I'll give you why a real reason. I came across, I just remembered this. I came across a Richarlison, uh, I think yesterday while I was playing champs, and this, this Richarlison had four play styles. Hmm. I swear to God, he felt better than Arna, and I, I, it was impossible to stop him. I don't even remember what playstyles he had. I was just stunned that I saw four playstyles on a card that I was just trying to understand the permutations to actually get that card. And he was incredible, and he kept doing that stupid celebration after scoring, and he scored quite a lot of goals. 
But that's what I think EA is worried about is creating these random cards that turn out to be way better than any card they can actually release in packs, which is why they're, they're being really slow on the, on the EVO release. And that's- Shout, they're making billions. They're making billions. It's, it's just such a bad excuse that they, they yeah. can't find a way to tr- close the door on this. They're literally selling this pack for £35 each, and I've seen God knows how many of them opened. Like, invest in somebody to be able to... Yeah. You could put one person on this problem. And again, I said this last week, they're leaving money on the table with these Evos because I would be spending probably FC points on them. And I'm sure thousands of other players that have lower league teams and different Evos they want to do would be as well. And they're leaving it on the table. So I think it's garbage. Uh, but I, 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 I do. T- I, I take your point. I, that That yeah. is a very real con- concern. But I just don't think it's good enough that they sit there and use that That's as an brilliant. excuse. Absolutely. I completely agree. I think with, with, with regards to leaving money on the table, one of the things that's really struck me this week was the fact that you remember during team of the year when we had the discussion and we're looking at the team of the year cards and they were they were really low and they were getting a lot of 84 into 10 repeatable tradable cards that were coming out as promo packs. And we thought, oh, there's going to be a whole lot when the whole team's in packs. And we all expected the prices to go down. And as soon as all the cards came into packs, we didn't have a single one of those lightning rounds where we had the 84 into 10. Uh, tradable packs, all right? We didn't have any of those packs all along until this weekend. This weekend, we had all those tradable supply packs available in, in, in the store. And what quizzes me, what I'm confused about, why don't they release these sorts of things during the time where people would actually spend some money to pack one of those cards and release it now? And it didn't sell out. I think I looked at some of them. It didn't even sell out this weekend. So it's almost like they... They they know when to not take the money because it actually they have some they have some clear signs there with regards to evils as well. I'm sure they have some signs behind exactly how when to yeah. release certain things when they because I remember when, you, when the Centurions um, Evo came out at the start of the game. I think each and every one of us completed the Centurions evolution. I think every single player in the game wanted to get the uh, the Lorente or some people wanted to get the Chiomani. I did the Chiomani stupidly, but there's a lot of people that actually spent other in-game currency or bought uh, FC points. So they know how to play that particular game to get the money through and. The store, was, store is a really good example, not providing a single 84 to 10 tradable supply pack all along from Team of the Year till now, and then suddenly open it up, open the floodgates now. It's just weird, but there's science to it. EA going to EA. So let's just very quickly then talk about playing without pressure. I, I think, to be honest, we've, we've kind of covered it in, in the discussions we've had in the first sort of 40 minutes of this show in the... Again, it's it's rejuvenated my enjoyment of the game, just playing a bit more casual with you, Nath, playing a bit of co-op. And also, like you said, Shaq, just having that mentality of, I think I can finally play the game not for rewards because I know that the rewards, I mean, there's certainly an incentive still, but I no longer have that FOMO factor of if I miss a week of yeah. rivals, if I miss a week in league, I'm getting, my team is going to fall behind because quite frankly, your team just doesn't fall behind anymore, Shaq. Exactly, exactly. I'll give you an example. This champs, um, I played nine games precisely, five, four, and I stopped. I probably could have pushed and created another hour to play, and I just stopped because I wanted to do other things, and I thought, you know what, I couldn't be bothered. Never got back to it. I left it at five, four, and I got the 24 point, whatever we, whatever milestone, 24 points. I just stopped there. One more win, a few more uh, free wins to people I could have gone to the next rank up. Couldn't be bothered just couldn't be bothered and that's a huge shift in my mentality because before the the, the, the maybe that two month ago me would have tried to grind from the five wins to the six wins once i get to the six wins i'll be like let me just push to the nine wins once i got to the nine wins let me just push to the 11 wins and get nothing in the end so at least there's some mentality change in that pressureless playing was actually fun i had i got shafted by rich allison and those kind of guards but it didn't stop me i just still had fun <laughs> Yeah, and Nathan, you do you think you were in a better sort of place, a uh, relationship with this game? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it gets challenging. I quite like the challenge in rivals. I'm more of a rivals and a cup and then a squad battles type person due to my time restraints and, and availability. Um, rivals, I, I've taken a different mindset where you know last year it was always had to be elite. This year, I actually couldn't care. I think I wanted to be. I think I said I want it to be Div 3. I think the rewards change at Div 3 where they're actually decent. Div 2 is good when you get the 84 times 10. And then we were saying yesterday, Dan, looking at Div 2 and Div 1 rewards, there's pretty much no difference. So Div 1 isn't there by design. That was there by pure fluke of, of chaining a, 
a win streak together and not realizing it. Won a game and then it, it accidentally put me up. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, 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 it's hard because you want to be in a decent division. And and we were saying in that last game for your promotion yesterday, like we didn't want you didn't really want to win, but at the same time we were one nil up or two nil up or whatever it was. And then we're like, if we blow this now, like our competitive <laughs> side of us. So it's not really pressure from out with, but obviously there's still a competitive nature. That's that's why we still play the game. We wouldn't play it if there wasn't that side of things. So I, I, I'm in a good place with it, to be honest. And I still get annoyed like I would if something doesn't go right. But at the same time, after the game's done, I'll not sit and stew. I'll not, you know, throw things or go in bad mm. moods. It's just, it is what it is. It's players that are, there's a lot of players out there much better than me. I'm better than certain players that we come up against. Yes. And one of the things without pressure that um, when I took my time off um, sort of Christmas time, what I did is I unfollowed a hell of a lot of people on social media. Um, I still have, you know, my favorite accounts that I follow for FIFA related stuff, but I, I, I used to have thousands on Twitter and Instagram of just pure FIFA pages. I unfollowed a lot of them and only follow like the good guys now, if you like. And that makes a big difference because when I log on, you're not just getting all these people that are just like, oh my God, I've got this player, I've got that player, I've packed that. And then I think, oh, I've got to do that SBC, I've got to get that pack. Like, it's now so much more chill. And I think that side of things as well really helps the, the pressure, not so much the actual playing, but just the, the being on the game in one way, shape, or form. Can, can I ask both of you in, in Division 2, Division 1, when you play friendlies, are you finding the competition to be the same quality as you're playing in your, your rivals? Or is it higher? Or are you finding... Match I was slightly, slightly lower easier. in mine, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. In that in that cup that we had a couple of weeks ago, it was the eighty seven yeah, rate. That's or exactly. Yeah. I I blitzed through that the first week. I think I had two game sessions or three game sessions or something. And I obviously I played the rest because you had the whole you had to play three. So I just gave those wins away in case people needed them. But that's I awesome. generally found it fairly fairly straightforward. Um, like I said, you still you always come up against a demon or two. Like that yeah, that, yeah. that is FIFA for you. But yeah. I actually found it fairly straightforward. I found it harder in the good. first few days the, the mode was out because that's when you have everyone who's really good and really wants those rewards desperately. They're the ones that are out. But then once the first kind of week was over, I then found it quite easy to polish things off. Um, but yeah, you, you do run into, as Nate said, the odd demon, but generally it's okay. Um, but it's certainly nowhere near what it was when it was open batch making and you would stroll through these cups and icon <laughs> swaps and stuff in icon in, swaps. The sp- in, the sp- yeah, in the space of an hour. It's, it, there's, de- there's definitely a skill-based element to it um, and you do have to work harder. But yeah, it's, I don't think it's appalling. Um, but we- on that one, sorry, just quickly, yeah, on. Just, just one extra. On that, the best thing about that though is because it wasn't limited. So it wasn't five games a day. That makes a hell of a difference because yes, people absolutely. aren't going super sweaty. You see, people are trying new things. People are clearly trying new formations because you know the players aren't exactly where you'd expect them to be, and obviously it's different different yeah. cards they're using. So that is a big win. I know we've slated EA quite a bit today, but that is you know even if they were to make it a sweaty mode but have it uncapped games, that yep. would be tremendous. And that yep. that you see people's mentality shift from being ratty and sweaty to actually just playing the game to fair enough. You want the reward of the pack of the token, but it makes a big difference just being able to go, right, this guy's better than me. That's fine. I'm not going to be bothered. Yeah, exactly. Um, right, we will get to a very quick player review very shortly, but we do have a question in the mailbag today, and that comes from the King of the North, Ingvi. He asks, is the pack weight an all-time low this week? Can't seem to pack more than one during the fantasy promo. I got loads. Um, I'll take this one first, and I, just because I said this to you, Shaq, before we are on air. The reason for that, for me, Ingvi, is if you look at the cards they've released... Look at the drop weight they had when they were originally in packs because you never saw anybody packing them when they were regularly in packs. So why – I can't imagine they've changed their weight is, is my theory behind it, which is why the only players most of us seem to be seeing is I just see Fire Isco. I think I've seen him like four times, <laughs> um, and that's the only card I've seen. I know, Nathan, you, you obviously had that outlier with Neymar. But, I mean, chaps, any, any thoughts on pack weight, Shaq? Now you're pretty spot on there. I mean, for example, like usually what happens when cards get um, re-released, you see a card like Neymar when he was at 5.3 million last week. I expected him to go half, not half price, maybe around 3 million. He's circling around 4.3, 4.4 million right now from 5.2. So he's not really had that much supply. Well, there's outliers like Nathan who backed him, but the, the supply isn't as strong as it should be. And that's a clear indicator of what's happening with the with the cards right now. They've just got the same pack weight as they had when they were back when they were in first released. 
Yeah, I mean, the the one exception is Deli Ali, who I think I need to invite oh. him around for dinner because I think I've had yeah. him seven times now. But the caveat with that, and you know, the, Neymar was like the day one of the promo on a on a silly eight one plus player pick, so that that wasn't something I was even thinking there was a chance of getting. But you know, the three of us I think have grinded the menus fairly hard this week. Um, because it's you know it's been easy to so I've packed quite a lot of promo cards but I'll caveat that with I have grinded and opened a hell of a lot of packs um, so comparatively speaking it's probably is still very very low but I'm seeing more because I'm doing this you know the player pick grind and you know foolishly I spent about 150k yesterday on Rodri just so I could put him into the exchanges to feed the feed the pack habit as well so um yeah, I think it is still very low, although I'm not seeing it personally. The, the last couple of days have been a lot lower. The start of the promo, I was getting a lot lot more, and you know, every few packs was getting some sort of crappy promo card. But yeah. yesterday, today, I've had some big packs from the, the, the objectives, and I'm not seeing anything higher than an 84 just now. Yeah, I don't think it's at an all-time low. I just think that this is pretty much the weight we've been seeing for most of the promos. And again, just consider the fact that most of the cards are best of... They're best from their promos, and that's probably the reason why it seems low. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's an all-time low. I just think it's back to regular levels. I think Foot Fantasy was a fantastic pack weight, um, and I just think that this has just gone more back to normal, which is a shame because I loved it. Even though I saw Pedro Porro 8 million times, it was great to see Pedro Porro 8 million times. He had that little thrill of excitement every time the flares yeah. popped up on your screen. Um, but look, we're running fast out of time. Uh, let's do our player and reviews in about 30 seconds each. I will start with Rolfo, who is still available to see for five days. She's looking very good to get all three upgrades as well. Been using her at left back. Fantastic. I think she gets up and down the pitch really well. The four star, five star is very nice to have. I don't use the trickster very much, but even so, the only thing that is not as good, I went from using Batcher to her. The crossing isn't quite there, but I think in every other aspect, it's an upgrade on that Batcher card. The defending is better. The passing is better. The shooting is much better. Um, so I'd very much recommend doing this one. I think she's going to be a monster card. And I think this is going to be one of those cards that if you don't do it, you are going to regret it in a few weeks time. I think it is that much of a, a must do just for the utility this card will bring later on. Uh, Shaq, who's your player? I have a player that uh, unfortunately has expired and the, the SPC has expired rather than not the player themselves. But basically, uh, <laughs> uh, this is Akanji, Manuel Akanji. I think this is a card that I reluctantly did just maybe a few hours before the SPC expired and he is phenomenal in game. I think I was talking about the 89 rated, the non upgraded card himself was phenomenal, had amazing pace, really good, really good play styles, really good in game, great passing, amazing passing at uh, when he was just able to get out of, of, of tricky situations, competitive for Van, Van Dyke. Um, and if you can put him through the Evo, he becomes a 91 rated card who's just phenomenal in game. So if you're trying to replace Van Dyke, you're bored of Van Dyke. This is your answer, even though I still believe Van Dyke is slightly better. It's just, just my personal opinion. But... <laughs> and he's Nate. good. He's really good. Nate, he's yeah, a as we, man. Yeah, as we touched on, we've got the Neymar. So um, to begin with, I wasn't putting him in my team. I still had the the base Eusebio, who was doing a very good job. Um, basically, Shaq shaking his head now. He he forced me. He twisted my arm behind my back and told me to put him in. So I have. Um, he's a different type of player. He's not as powerful. But he's just unreal. You give him the ball, you can't get the ball off him. Even if you don't know what you're doing, it's still six to him. Um, he's actually playing as the, the central striker in my four one, no, my five two two one. Um, but him, Sophia Smith, and Best kind of interlink well. They can all drift. Um, like I say, you can't get the ball off him. His finishing's unreal. The five star weak foot is brilliant, and he reminds me very much of Neymar from two or three years ago, where everybody had to get him, and his price held really high right through, even on his gold card. He's He's top draw, to be honest. So very happy with that. Um, would recommend picking him up. But I, yeah, like Shag told us the price and we looked at it. So don't go pick him up because it would probably he's definitely not four and a half million worth of player. Um, his comparison with, with the team of the year, Messi, that you've got, Dan, um, with the five-star weak foot. So very happy. Yeah. Look, I'd love to get my hands on that card. Uh, I've got a Kanji. I agree with Shaq. Very good card. I'm probably going to put him through the year, but I'm just going to wait just to see in case there's another showdown. Ooh, to, clever, to man. Clever. Um, so we shall see. But look, that does wrap up the show. No formation in review this week. We'll get back to that next week. We've had so much to talk about on today's show. Um, so we'll get back to that another time. Thank you for all the support. As always, thank you to our patrons, patreon.com forward slash foots in review. Remember episode 600. 
arriving, heading very, very fast. I think this is episode 594 today. I always lose track of which episode we're on. Um, so yeah, not very long away. Very much looking forward to that. Um, so thank you for all the feedback and stuff we've had so far towards that one. Um, nothing really else to say, gents. Anything? Any I just have closing thoughts, Shaq? One final question for both, both of you. Uh, we know that uh, Winter Wildcard's Icon SBC is coming out. If not Pele, who would you want it to be? Quick, what top of your mind? I can't even remember who's Winter Wildcard. Nath? No, no I'm the same. Uh, Butcher always is, does well against me. I don't really know any others um, off the top of my head. Drogba, I, I, Owen, Lineker, uh, I would Rush. take a Drogba. I want a big, big striker or any pure cdm because i'm really lacking a, an actual like a medium high cdm at the moment so i would take one of those yeah Jogba, i always I always love drog so i'll take that and i'm just looking through the list of the rest of them and there's probably not a lot of others i mean yeah maybe, maybe garincha but even then that's a bit of a push um yeah yourself butra i think uh, i've come across that butra recently and he's a menace so yeah i wouldn't mind doing a butra just to yeah mess with people yeah <laughs> Excellent. Right. We will be back again. Follow us on socials at Foot Coach. You know where we all are by now. Again, the show will return over the weekend where we'll be welcoming a very happy foot birthday um, with John. And I think Ingvi is going to join him as well. Although, of course, subjects change. Again, thank you very much for all of your support. Only one thing left for us to do. We are going to drop it. Drop it. Drop it. You. You. F-U-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-